welcome to part 24 of the security tube metasploit framework expert in this video we will start with metapreda scripting very simple script how do you create a clone of the migrate script on metasploit this video is part of the smfe certification if you need more information on how to enroll and get certified please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 30 plus countries around the world. And this video is provided free of charge to our community in tune with our vision mission to provide quality yet free infosec education to one and all. Okay, so in the last video, we saw how do you locate different APIs uh, which you can use in your metapreter scripts. Now in this video, we'll formally start off to metapreter scripting. Now one of the things I wanted to mention is in Metasploit, uh, basically the whole framework is moving towards using post-exploitation scripts where the API is exactly the same. However, the way of writing is different. For this video, we will concentrate on the regular metapreter scripting in which most existing scripts are currently there. Okay, so if I want to create a clone for migrate, the first thing is I need to locate the API which offers me the ability to migrate my metapreter session into a new process. So let's go back to our machine. Now I've broken into a Windows 7 machine and now what I'm going to do is go to pen test, exploits, framework. Uh, and inside that, let me go to lib rex port post metapreter. And under this, let me just open up the client core file. Now, this class allows us to go ahead and migrate into an arbitrary process, right? So if we scroll down, you notice that here it is, migrates the metapreter instance to the process specified by PID. The connection to the server remains established. Fantastic, right? How do you call this migrate and then probably give it the PID into which you want to migrate? Okay, awesome. Now. Step two is actually going to be to find a template which we can use to start creating our metapreter script. Now, Metasploit makes this extremely simple. What we're going to do is uh, go into documentation and under documentation, let's go into samples, scripts, and here you would find a script called metapreter script template. Now let's copy this template script into the script directory where all other metapreter scripts are, right? So I'm in framework right now, framework, inside that let's go to scripts, metapreter, right? And this is where all your other metapreter scripts are. And let me call this smfe slash migrate.rb. Okay, and let me go into that directory so that I can start editing the file a little bit more comfortably. So we have already located the function which is responsible. Now, when you open up the template file, you will notice there's a ton of stuff in there. Let me take you step by step about what we need to do, right? Our script requires an input. What is the input? the PID of the process we want to migrate within. Now let's not worry about ID and revision, which is more for bookkeeping. Let's just call this security tube SMFE, right? Now client here is basically the client interface which allows us to do uh, what we did in command line in the previous video. So let me call this PID to migrate, right? This is going to be my variable migrate to PID. 
this is basically going to contain uh, the PID which the user is going to give as input. Now, this is basically the different parser options which are going to be there, right? Hyphen H is for the help menu. Hyphen O onwards is basically, or any other letter we'd like to use, is when we want to pass arguments to the metaprinter script. Now, here is the user's message function where we can go ahead and edit uh, the purpose of the script. And at times, you also want to ensure that you are using the right metaprinter version, which is, you know, probably the script only works for something like Windows and Win32 or maybe Win32 and 64, but not for the other metaprinter, uh, you know, kind of supported versions. So you probably want to remove the rest of them, right? In this, let's say, let's assume that our script only supports uh, Win32 and Win64 as an example, right? Now, when you pass on the inputs, uh, what happens is this function is what is going to pass your inputs and store the value which you're feeding inside the right function, right? So what I'm going to do is, the first thing to do is let's just change this to P, more representative of the PID. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, well, the valve which the user is inputting should go into migrate to PID, which is the variable name which we had just defined. And let's also convert this to P. Okay, fantastic. Now let's also insert a new purpose. which is metal printer script for process migration, right? So now what do we do? Well, we need to use this input which the user is giving to us and then migrate to that PID. So let's go ahead, start a new line. And then here is what we are going to do, right? So let's go ahead and begin a block. Now, if you want to print something with a little positive sign inside it with the two square brackets, which is this, we're going to use this function called print underscore good, right? And let's say we says about to migrate to PID and then we need to enter the PID which the user has inputted which was basically stored in migrate to PID right fantastic now let's run the actual migration which is client dot core dot migrate if I remember well and then the PID to migrate in which is migrate to PID, this is what the user has input. This is a string, we need to convert this into an in by using two underscore i. Then if all went well, we can just go ahead and type in, right, migration success. Now, if there was an error, then basically we're going to get an exception. All right. And what we're going to do is, if you want to print error, right, which is this, just going to type in print error. And then what we can go ahead and say is migration Field with a little crying smiley <laughs> and let's also give the user the reason for the actual failure I, okay I'll leave that as an exercise to you right anyway tell me how in the comment section you can go ahead and print the error as well right so this is what is going to happen the user enters the PID with the hyphen p option and that is going to be passed eventually to client.core.migrate 
If the migration succeeds, we get this. If it fails, this is what we get. Okay, fantastic. Now let's go back to our Metapreter session. We are running on a Windows 7 machine. And here is what we're going to do. Let's run the Metapreter script SMFE migrate with the hyphen H option. And immediately you see, it basically says Metapreter script for process migration, fantastic. And hyphen P, option that requires a value, stupid ass. Let's go ahead and quickly change that to enter the PID to migrate into. Okay, quick change here. PID to migrate into. Right, actually more of PID of the process to migrate into, but hey, I'm not a native English speaker. I can get away with it. Right? PID to migrate. The best part is you don't need to restart the framework, right? Because it's going to take the script directly from the directory every time you invoke it. So we need a PID. Let's do a PS. Find a PID. So we are inside Notepad from what I know. Right, 1156. Okay, now we are actually in some other file, uh, some other process ID, which is 1156. What we are going to do is we are in Explorer. Let's try and get back to Notepad 520. So let's go ahead and run our script with the hyphen P option and let's give 520 as the input, right? And let's see what's happening. About to migrate to PID 520. Fingers crossed. Fantastic. Let's do a get PID. And there you go. And if we had ran something arbitrary, the same migration fail, right? Awesome. I can assure you there are tons of error checks and tons of other cases which we should ideally handle. Uh, which the regular migrate script handles from what I understand, right? Uh, things like kill original process, you know, probably migrate to the first process with a specific name. You could do a ton of stuff. The point I'm trying to make is it is this simple to take a template, make modifications and get started with what you've learned in the previous video, which is taking the API and actually going ahead and doing your magic. The rest is your creativity. Post-exploitation is about being creative. You're not bound by the APIs Metasploit gives you, right? As you've seen with Railgun, you can use any API which the system has natively with any DLL, or you can even ship your own DLL and then use it. So nothing stops you from going ahead and doing fantastic things with it. In the next video, what I'm going to do is take a slightly more complicated example in which we search for a specific process uh, by process name in the list of running processes on the remote system. Okay. Okay. So that's all for this video. This is part of the security tube Metasploit framework expert. If you like what you see, please do consider enrolling for our course and certification by visiting securitytube.net slash smfe. Have a fantastic day ahead. Bye-bye.